Attention, due to the nature of the films discussed, the Civil Gore podcast may contain adult language and themes. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode 62 of the Civil Gore podcast. I am your host, Tim. And this is Brian. And we're, we're survived somehow. I Tim should be a lot more tired than I am. Um... But he'll get into that when he tells the story why he's so tired. Um, I'm just tired because I'm getting trying to pack and I worked a l- extra long tonight so I could uh, leave a little early from work tomorrow to make sure we catch our flight to California. So I've been uh, and trying to get ready around the house. So it's 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 like a mental exhaustion while Tim has a physical exhaustion. Yeah. So as we'll talk about later in the first chop, I went to the Hollywood Nights event, coaster event uh, in Holiday World in Santa Claus, Indiana is a long way away from me and uh yeah i'm pretty exhausted but we'll we'll mention more about that in a little bit uh this show is going to be a little shorter again this week because of all the travel we've been doing i got back uh literally at midnight last night so i didn't have time to watch any movies for the podcast i know brian was getting ready to go out of town so we we're kind of stuck again in one of those weeks where we both had a lot of travel going on so we decided not to review a movie this week and we're just going to catch up on news and disc membermint and just kind of talk about anything that comes into our heads. It's kind of a, we kind of called it our trick or treat bag for this week. Yeah. And I figure we'll just push the movie to, since I already watched it, um, we could just push the movie till next week. Uh, we were going to do Evil Speak. So we could just do it for next week. Um, I think we have one more week right before the slaycation drops. Right, so we yeah. need to tuck in a movie. So we'll do Evil Speak next week. So, yeah, so sorry. I know we promised you a movie this week, but I'm sure we have some good stuff anyway tonight uh, to get you going. So this might be a true Ken episode. Yeah. Uh, This may be less of a Cody and more of a Ken episode. And for those of you who just joined us, if they don't know that, Cody likes the long episodes and Ken likes the short episodes. So we've we've fondly named them after two of our (laughs) uh, uh, most uh, prominent listeners there. Although it seems like... Every time I think an episode is going to be short, it runs longer. And every time I think an episode is going to be long, it runs shorter. So, well, that, that's what happens when you have one when you have a co-host who is Jew, a, a New York Jewish guy. <laughs> we tend to talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and behave tonight, though. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't mind it at all. I don't think our listeners mind it all either, because uh, I think what you have to say is important, Brian. Well, thank you. Uh, so let's get right into it. This is our first chop. All right, so the teaser trailer for the Suspiria remake has dropped, and Brian, I don't know about you, but I think this looks absolutely fantastic. Oh, it really does, and I I haven't seen the original in a long time, but I will say that even if you probably haven't seen the original, this one really kind of, uh, it just invokes like a really retro like 70s vibe between the music going and the, the cuts to it. It just has one of those those really like 70s horror vibes to it which just to me is like re- amazing it, it, like even if this was not a remake of something i'd be like i i think i'd be really excited and interested to see this yeah i've been trying to stay away from the suspiria remake uh i haven't read much much about it because the original suspiria is one of my favorite horror films i've got the uh back when uh this was on dvd i got the super like limited edition collectors, numbered collectors edition. It's like a huge, thick uh, three DVD set. Oh, uh, wow. And I used to just watch that over and over. In fact, I have I was actually started watching it again right before we started recording just because I had not seen it in a few years. But it is one of my favorites. And I, was, I wasn't opposed to a remake because I think it's one of those movies that is not well known enough by the general public that a remake would ruin it. I mean, everybody knows what Psycho is. Everybody right. knows what The Exorcist is. If you go making those remakes, they're bound to be a flop. But this kind of movie is is one of those that kind of falls in that gray area where maybe a remake would be okay. The, the, the horror purist might be against it. But if it exposes the movie to a new audience, I think that can be a good thing. And from what I've seen of the trailer, they're really going about this the right way because they're not trying to do a reproduction of the original Right. Uh, you could tell that in the uh, just looking at the trailer, they use a very muted color palette. The original Suspiria is famous for the bright reds and the bright blues. I mean, everything is it's just shot through gel filters. It's 
primary colors everywhere you look, whereas the uh, remake looks like it's a very muted, somber uh, feel to it. So you can definitely tell the director's going for a different, trying to set his apart from the original, which is a good thing. Yeah. And yeah, no, and it, it just, and I think it's like, I think what, what did we, I think we were just talking about this when we were talking about Tourist Trap, like whether or not a remake for that would be a good idea because it was, it's kind of under the radar. I mean, some people know it, some people don't, but if it would to make the original come back into discussion, it would be a good thing. Maybe it'll be with, uh, it'll do the same for that because maybe it'll discover, like, I, like, I think I've seen it once and it was a long time ago. So I'm a bad horror fan that I am, I guess. I need to watch it again, uh, before the remake, just, just so I can kind of comp- compare it, but not in the sense of which is better, but just so I can see, like, like I, I tend to appreciate remakes when I see what they did differently, rather what they tried to, to mimic, because anyone could go out there and mimic the same movie, but when you get a director that wants to try a, a different uh, take on it, that's what I kind of like. Yeah, and for those that don't know, this one, this remake is coming out in November, they did announce a release date. And it's going to start, has a really good cast. You've got yeah. uh, Chloe Grace Moretz, Dakota Johnson, Tilda Swinton, which I love. She's so creepy in everything. Even when she's not playing a creepy character, she's just yeah, inherently know, right? creepy. So I'm really looking forward to it just because from the cast alone. I mean, this is a big name cast. The other thing that's important to point out is the soundtrack. So Suspiria's soundtrack, I had read in an article, is almost more famous than the movie itself. It's a it, soundtrack by a uh, goblin. And they actually, <laughs> that sounds funny. Yeah. They, this band actually recorded the soundtrack before the movie, before they even saw the movie. So a lot of Suspiria's soundtrack is just completely unrelated to the action on the screen, which actually makes it more unsettling yeah. rather than less. And for the remake, they've gotten uh, Tom York, who is the lead singer of Radiohead to oh, compose okay. the music and I am a huge Radiohead fan and I love Tom York's solo stuff and there's other members of the band that have done uh, movie soundtracks I think this is Tom York's first or, or movie scores that is but I'm super excited over that because I'm a huge Radiohead fan they're one of the most talented bands just in terms of pure musicianship that I've ever seen as, as mm. live I mean, it yeah. blew me away. So uh, I'm really curious to see how he approaches this film and, and you know, how how iconic does he try to make it, or does he, you know, is he trying to just stay true to his musical sensibilities? You know, what it's going to be interesting to see what approach they take. the The Goblin soundtrack is just crazy. It's 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 you know it has that kind of that uh, vibe of a lot of those '70s films where the soundtrack is not really it's horror, but it's not like the do do do. Yeah, it's, like, it's more of a jarring. Kind yeah, of thing. exactly. Yeah. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. Now, in this the, the remake, it looks like we're going more for a more traditional horror score, but we'll we'll see how it goes. I'm sure if Tom York has anything to do with it, it will be anything but traditional when you see the final product. So, so the other big news in terms of movie trailers is that the new Halloween remake trailer will drop. On fr- actually, as you're listening to this podcast, right? Yeah, yeah. So we don't, we're not sure what time or anything, but uh, it is confirmed by the most reliable sources you could possibly ask for, which is Blumhouse. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and Bloody Disgusting, of course, tweeted it. A bunch of other people have jumped on it. I mean, it has been all over the, the, the uh, net today. I wonder if they did it intentionally to take away from the Suspiria <laughs> <laughs> trailer excitement. Like, let's announce our trailer. Yeah. And think of that, I hate to say it, but it probably got more excitement, the, the announcement of the Halloween trailer, than the actual viewing of the Suspiria trailer. Probably, like I said, not not a lot of you know general public, everybody knows who Michael Myers is, so they're they're excited for this one. Right, yes, he was Austin Powers, of yeah. course. <laughs> no, okay. Well, you said g- general public, so you yeah. know, no, I mean, I'm just messing. <laughs> well, we did... Uh, we did plan to do reaction videos, right? So when, right. when this trailer drops, we're going to specifically not watch it until we can film ourselves or have a significant other film us. Yeah, I, this yeah I'm going to be in California when I do it, but I will have uh, plenty of Julie's family there. So someone will be able to uh, 
to record. I'm not sure how to do. In all honesty, I hate. To, I'm not even sure how they people do this. I'm gonna have to look it up on how they do those cool reaction videos where they actually edit it so the little the actual trailer is playing in the screen. I'm sure there's a way to do it. Pretty simply, way too many people are doing it that it, it can't possibly require really expensive software or anything. Yeah, there's probably an there's probably an app for that. I would guess. Yeah, so. we'll we'll, we'll uh, figure it out. Yeah. In time. We have a week. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And I have a five and a half hour plane ride tomorrow night. I'm sure I can, with, with usually has some internet on there. I can search. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to yeah. that. Yeah. Unfortunately, Tim and I probably won't be able to time it to watch it together and do that just for the fact of that uh, the time zone difference. And it's hard enough for us to get together once a week to get actually time the podcast. Right. So, <laughs> but, we'll, well, yeah, so we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll just post them um, – Around the same time together. So uh, look for at some point uh, Friday night or early Saturday morning. So it'll be kind of like a day after probably the podcast itself releases. We'll probably be uh, – we'll have our videos on, by, uh, you know, up somewhere by Saturday. Yeah. So as I alluded to earlier in the intro, I just got back from Hollywood Nights, which is a coaster event in Santa Claus, Indiana. Well, you should say the coaster event. The coaster event, because it is year, by usually. far the the best coaster event I've ever attended, and I would argue is probably the best coaster event, period. Yeah, and I and I was it was killing me not to be there on this one. It's just with this other trip so close to it, it was just way too difficult to take the time off. Actually, more so Julie had to, had to take the time off, and it was just – it'd be just – too exhausting between going to, to time zones. I mean, I know we kind of did something. We had back-to-back trips last year, but there was a week in between. This was just going to be way too difficult. Yeah, it's it's out in the middle of nowhere, Indiana, basically. And yeah. so you ask, what in the world is out in the middle of Indiana that could attract coaster nerds from all over the country? And the answer is arguably three of the best wooden roller coasters in the world. Oh, yeah. There are three probably oh, – I think all three are in my top ten easily. Yeah. Not even close, actually. Now that I think about it, I mean, in fact, the first, um, the top three, my wooden roller coasters, two of them are from Holiday World. So. Yeah, and they have one pretty darn good steel wing coaster. So, yeah, basically, they don't they don't have the quantity, but I argued it to which ratio of quality per per amount. I mean, like every one of them they have is good. That's yes. the thing. Yeah. It's like there's not, a, there's not a dud, and that's 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 rare to get a park. That has, you know, to get to, to not find, I mean, yeah, you get your roller coaster where everyone finds something they like, but these are like, uh, I mean, top ranked coasters and all of them are in people's top tens of, for steel and wooden roller coasters. And now we're getting super coaster nerdy, which yeah. all our horror fans are like, huh? <laughs> what are you talking about top ten? <laughs> for the coaster nerds, this is the treat part of the episode. And for those who yeah. could care less, this is the <laughs> the trick. But anyway, we've, we've never been shy about our coaster nerd. Uh, tendency so well if that was did not exist this would not yeah. exist but i will tie this to horror i promise just be patient yeah, yeah so, it's getting there <laughs> but if you don't know the event is a two-night event and basically they close the park for all the general public you have to be a member of a coaster club to get into this event and they feed you free food free drinks which they always have free drinks that's one of their yeah. perks for the park and basically let you ride these roller coasters for you know three to four hours on both nights which doesn't sound like a lot of time until you realize that there are literally no lines you're just walking yeah. on or sometimes in in this case the event had a lower turnout than usual because of coaster mania going on so we were just staying oh, that's right. that usually does not happen the same weekend it's usually a week apart yeah so we were just right? staying on the ride i mean i would never waited in a line this time because we were oh, just, wow. I mean, we were just basic. I mean, unless somebody was in my row and I had to get out, we were just marathoning these things. So Holiday World has three wooden roller coasters, and you kind of think of them as the three little bears. There's the baby bear, the mama bear, and the daddy bear. The The smallest of the three. And when I say small, this is not a kiddie coaster. This is one of the most intense roller coasters I've ever ridden. And was number one one year, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, the first one is called the Raven. So you get in the horror theme already, right? So the first one's called the Raven. It's really cool. It has like little ravens painted inside of the station. And the great thing about this thing is it goes through the woods. And the Hollywood Nights event is the only time you can ride ride these roller coasters at night. Yeah, because it's just the time zone. Because it's right on that cusp of the time zone. So it makes it difficult. Yeah, the park usually closes at what? Seven every night? I think seven, eight o'clock. I mean, I think there's a couple of nights where you can possibly get lucky if it's not uh, – where you can get, like, you know, dusk 
right somewhat yeah. dark rides not like you get at hollywood nights though or yeah. hollywood nights sorry the hollywood uh nights. the middle <laughs> coaster which is i say is my favorite i'm almost leaning away from that this year because <gasps> oh, i know no, i know but uh I must still say it's my favorite uh, because of the. Theming. It is my favorite out of the three. Uh, you know, it's not. I don't think it's the best, but it's my favorite out of three. But uh, the it's called the Legend, and this one is themed after Sleepy Hollow and the Headless Horseman. And what is so cool about this roller coaster is that the station looks like an old schoolhouse. You even have a chalkboard up on the station wall, and the ride ops are so cool, especially during the Hollywood Nights event because they're really going you know full bore to please the fans. Uh, we had this great girl uh, ride up that we we asked her. We said, you know, we need a really good howl as we're going up the lift hill mm-hmm. because one of the uh, treats of this ride is that as you're going up the lift hill, the ride up will make a clippity clop sound with their microphone, mm-hmm. like the horseman's coming after you, and they'll usually do like a wolf howl. And so we asked her for a really good howl. So as we're going up the lift hill, I mean, she went all out. She had the <laughs> horseman galloping after us. She was howling at the moon, and uh, so that's all we heard as we. Uh, as we came over the lift hill and into the first drop. So that was a lot of fun. So I love that coaster just because of the theming. In fact, that's the one coaster I have the most shirts of. Yeah. I want to order that new shirt they have that look cool. I can order it online. I think. Well, they that actually, yeah, really cool. I, I did not order. I did not buy that one. Actually this trip, I bought a different one. And the only reason oh, I bought okay. the different one is because I didn't know about it. And it's, it's a more subdued. It's, it doesn't have a picture. It's like more of like the, just a kind of a logo thing, but I kind of like that because my coaster shirt preference is more into the stuff that doesn't look like a coaster shirt. I like yeah. stuff that looks a little more muted, so that's why I went with that one. But I always buy a legend shirt when I go to Holiday World. And what, what, what you know what what's pretty cool about I think the especially Legend and Raven is they are located in the Halloween section. That's so right. because yeah. Holiday World, I mean, to its namesake, each land you know how Disneyland has its lands. Well, Holiday World, their lands are based on holidays, so. You know, they have Christmas, they have Thanksgiving, they have Halloween, 4th of July. So it's got a really cool, you know, and so they, it's like that, and you know, they really stick to the theming for a regional park that's not like, you know, it's something not like a Disney or Universal where obviously the theming goes, you know, full blast. But they do a really good job for one of those, those just which was considered a reasonable park, and it's family owned. It's not even owned by a corporation. It's, it's, yeah. So it's like you get, you get such. I mean, we could go on literally for the entire episode of just talking about how amazing Hol- Holiday World is, but uh, we, you know, but that'll that'll be for another uh, trick or treat episode, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the uh, last coaster and the biggest, baddest one of them all is called the Voyage, and this thing is a oh, beast. Yeah. It's over like, over a mile of track, or just about a mile of track. Huge. Do you research, Tim. Yeah, hu- <laughs> huge wooden coaster. And it's one of the most intense things you will ever do is riding that beast at night. I'm, I'm yeah, it, it's insane. But what I wanted to talk about and how to tie this back into horror is on Saturday night, unfortunately, we started having lightning move in. Well, of course, you know, lightning and roller coasters doesn't mix. They're not going to send people 100 feet in the air with lightning crashing all around. So they had... Even names uh, with lightning in the coasters don't mix. Yeah. So... I'm looking at you, lightning, Rob. (laughs) The staff was like, uh, sorry, guys, we got to pause the event. So basically, everybody had to go run to Kringle's Cafe, which is the the main restaurant in in the front of the park. And fortunately, they're so good about you know, keeping really close tabs on the radar. So if, if the, as long as the lightning is going to move around you, you're only getting delayed for, you know, maybe 10, 20 minutes. And that's what happened in this case. And they even extended the uh, ride time at the end for 30 minutes to make up for some of the lost time. Didn't I predict that too? You did. When you texted me, I I said, Oh, there's probably so good. They'll just extend it. Yeah, they did. (laughs) But what was so cool is, for some reason, and I don't really know why they chose the soundtrack, they haven't done it in the past that I'm aware of, they started playing their whole Halloween mix of horror movie scores <laughs> Saturday night. So as I'm riding to the Raven and I posted on Instagram, they're they're blasting the Halloween theme, they played the Exorcist theme, song, stuff from Carrie, I mean, all these crazy good horror movie scores. And we went to go take a ride on Raven. And we were sitting in the station, the exorcist themes playing lightning is starting to move in again. We take off on this thing. And let me tell you, when it goes out in the woods, there's no lights back there at all. 
and you're dropping through tunnels and stuff. So it is pitch black dark. It's like yeah. riding Space Mountain or something, but even darker. And you can barely make at that lake that's there. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a turn that goes around right by the lake. And as we're going around that turn, you see lightning bolt flash in the distance. And so you're like, just imagine careening through the woods hmm. in the pitch dark with lightning flashing all around. It was amazing. One of the most memorable rides I've ever had on any coaster, much less uh, Raven, because Raven was always my least favorite of the three. But uh, how I'm going to tie this into horror, Brian, hmm. if I haven't already, is that I did not know this. You probably did know this. Coaster nerds probably know it. I did not know this yeah, until this I did, I did know this, actually. Yeah, but there, a woman actually died on the Raven in 2003. She basically, it appears that she unbuckled her seatbelt and stood up on this thing, which is the oh stupidest God. thing you could ever do. And there's a final drop that basically goes way, I mean, well, I'm going to be a little PG-13 here, Brian. It's, we call it the old shit. Because yeah. yes, that's yeah, that's yeah. the only explanation you can have for it because it really it's that fifth drop yeah it takes you by surprise like a fifth drop into like a tunnel looking thing and she stood up there and that's where she fell out she was in the back row and, and she fell out you know like 69 feet to her death eventual mm. death and so i'm riding this thing with uh my brother in the back row and, and every time we go through that drop that's all i could think about was that this woman flew out of this very seat that i was in into that dark woods oh it's so creepy it gave the ride a whole new level of creepiness that i had never experienced before not knowing that yeah i knew someone died i didn't know quite how i just knew that she fell i didn't know like the the super detailed things on it but yeah that's always a i mean and not not to you know to to disparage anyone from going on a roller coaster because usually it's 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 person error based. A lot of these these things, they're usually they're not they're much safe. Like basically, the the best stat I like to give when anyone says anything about it is, you have more of a chance to get into an accident on the way to the park than at the park. Yeah, and there there was an investigation obviously into this, and it was determined that all the safety mechanisms were working correctly, and that this was a ride rider not using the ride responsibly. Yeah, I don't know how did she got out though. That's the curious part. Usually, you cannot get out of those things. Oh, the Boulder Dash! I saw someone sit on the back edge of the seat in front of us one time, and oh my god, yeah, and that was crazy. How stupid, you could be. Yeah, and Julie was screaming at her because if this girl would have fell, and and it was because she was playing Pokemon Go on the ride. If she would have actually fell back, we probably would have been dead because she was, you know, she was a little heavy set. But the fact that she, you know, at that force coming back at you, there's no way oh my and we, gosh. Can't, we couldn't go anywhere. It's not like we could avoid her, avoid her coming. So we're in a coaster seat and we're, you know, strapped in. So I'm not sure how Jeez. she exactly got herself out. I mean, I think her legs were still strapped in, but she kind of like leaned forward to the point of where she was, uh, was back on the, more back on the, the, you know, the back of the seat than the actual seat. Yeah, this girl, uh, as I was reading into the details, was very small. Oh, okay. So she may have been able to wriggle out. You know, if she had undone her seatbelt, she may have been wriggled herself out from under the lap bar. If oh, they had okay. not, you know, If she had not pulled it down all the way. Because, you know, a lot of coaster riders like to leave some gaps so they get a little airtime. Yeah, I'm admittedly one of those. <laughs> I am too, but then, I'll, but most of the time you also have a seat belt, and you're also, okay. you're not going to come. We're not small enough, no. Brian, you yeah. and I, to just fly out. No, we, we will so. not be going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, that so that was cool. Uh, that's how I kind of tied in uh, this coaster event with the horror aspect, because I got to ride the roller coaster that killed somebody. Yeah. yeah, actually, I've been on a couple now, apparently, that's killed someone, from what I understand, but that's it. <laughs> Yeah, there was a, there's a wild mouse at Family Kingdom that I think killed somebody. Oh yeah, we all rode that, on. didn't we? We all rode that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. That's how you sold it to me to ride it. <laughs> you said you yeah, could ride the wild mouse where someone died. That's where our morbid. That's where you tie horror and coaster nerds yeah. together with those morbid statistics like that. But, exactly. Yeah. Speaking of the Halloween section in Holiday World, they have one of my favorite swing rides oh, of yes. all time. Because it yep. is a beautiful lighting package on this thing. Yep. I need to post. I've got pictures from last year. I didn't take any pictures this year, but I'll post a picture on Instagram of the swing ride. It is it's a completely Halloween themed swing ride, and it's a pretty darn good swing ride yeah. just in and of itself. Yeah, it's the Hallow Swings they're called. They're really yeah, good. Does, yeah, Hallow Swings. It does the because uh, it does the little up and down motion, and they go really high. And uh, for 
for a typical swing ride. Like the one at Carowinds, I can't stand because it's so gentle. But um, yeah, so I'll I'll post a picture of that and and but it was, it was a fantastic trip. But man, it was a long drive. It was fourteen. It took us fourteen hours to get there and fourteen hours oh. back. And didn't you drive the whole way back in one shift, right? In one day? Yeah, we drove the whole way back in one shift. That is so brutal. We... The most I ever drove, I think, in one day was 13 hours. And you've, you beat that by an hour. And I know that night I was, like, starting to hallucinate. By the... Yeah, now Kevin did – Kevin went with me, so he was, we were able to trade off. Oh, that's good. So we, we split the trip back, so that was – no way I could have done it all by myself. No, no, you would have. It was yeah. just – but I was dead when I got back. But, yeah, yeah tons of fun. If you, can, if you guys ever – want to do a coaster event that's number one in my book go out there and it's so inexpensive I oh mean, it's my not god it really to get is out there but, i mean it's like what i think it was 80 bucks to get both days that includes day admission to the park even before the event on both days and we actually you had the free ones because we we actually won yeah. the the water cup challenge which i we could not defend our honor since julie and i could not make it this year that's right although i will say in the the water cup challenge if you don't know was you have to ride the legend with a full cup of water <laughs> and you have a team, you have a team and you all have a cup of water and then you come back and when you dump the water that's remaining into a measuring cup and then the team who has the most water at the end of the event wins. And we and won. You're competing. <laughs> we won against hundreds of people, but yeah. they did it differently again. They did it differently this year, Brian, which I don't quite like. Oh. They, they changed the way they measure the water. So, they decided that instead of making teams be four people, which they did last year. So last year you had yeah. to have four people. This year you could have any size team, but what they would do is take the average oh. of all of your water. So if you had three people, it would be the amount of water you had divided by or averaged by three. And if you had two oh, people, I see. Okay. but that what to me that, that gave two pe- people teams a significant advantage because if both of you did really well you're going to have a super high score oh that's right yeah whereas a four-person team has a much greater chance of someone losing a lot of water right so uh, yeah we didn't we didn't stand a chance this year but i did really well i used the same technique which i will not give yes away. no we cannot give that away we were, we were but we i used were the same that one <laughs> i used the same technique from last year and i had almost a completely full cup of water when i got off that ride yeah, I got um, yeah, they, and there's actually using that technique. You can actually, well, actually, I won't even say it. How to give it away? But I basically no. just basically there's if if you do it correctly, you could almost come back literally with exactly the amount of water you started with if you do it right. Mm-hmm. And that's yep. all I'll say. But um, and yeah, and last <laughs> year we uh. We we did really well, and there was actually I think people got a little annoyed that we won because I guess they used the same tactic we did and they thought it was some kind of exclusive uh tactic um it was kind of <laughs> i mean it's really not that much of a secret if you actually sit there and think about it there's there's you know and you watch other people fail it's a matter of time before you figure it out <laughs> yeah but we won't we'll leave that yeah, to we'll you leave that to, to you guys out. yeah you guys can do that but but basically yeah but long story short uh, any yeah if you um I mean, even if you throw in the Coaster Club membership, I think you can get Coaster Crew for, what, $30 a person? Yeah. And you yeah. add that into your thing. What you get out of that event doesn't even come close. You, The value is so amazing. I mean, between what they f- feed you and the, the, the amount of rides you get out of it and just the experience you get out of it, they're, they're really I, – I pay five times the amount and still feel that way. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you what they fed you to. Oh yeah, that's uh, right. through that real quick, just to give you an example. So, Friday you had wings, spinach dip, uh, desserts, and I'm talking about a variety of chicken wings, not just one kind. And wait, now, you know, um, actually, you should also explain though. Explain you get water park ERT that first night yeah. too for a couple of hours, which is rare at a park that you get something like that. And they have water coasters, so it's even better. Yeah, which like which are probably slides. the two best water coasters out there. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we had the first night was chicken wings, spinach dip, um, all these great desserts, cake pops, uh, like these pudding parfait things that were awesome. And then uh, you could go in to Kringle's Cafe. They had pizza. All you can eat pizza. They had fudge. Oh, which is so good, by the way, their fudge. If you wanted salad for some reason. Yeah. You could have salad. 
Um, so yeah, all that was there Friday. Saturday they have a full buffet because they put everybody back at the picnic shelter while they get the general public out of the park. So they had fried chicken, they had mash, uh, I'm sorry, uh, macaroni and cheese, pulled pork barbecue, black bean burgers if you wanted that, hamburgers. I mean, it was insane the amount of food oh and then they had a, a walk back tour of thunderbird and they had a nacho bar at the end of that so you go ahead and get a oh that's right yeah they have those little secret snacks throughout the day they get yeah you. like i never paid for food but one time the entire time i was <laughs> there and the only reason i paid for that was we didn't we thought the nachos we were like and eh, we didn't go on the walk back and we kind of got there at the tail end of the nacho bar so i was like you know what i'm just gonna get some chicken tenders because i'm like starving right now and i don't think nachos are gonna cut it but still a lot of our group never paid a dime for food the entire time they were there or drinks because all the drinks are free right and their food is fantastic and those free drinks it's not like you get like one little stand no they were everywhere in the park you can't like i mean there's one little dead zone which is kind of funny it seems like it's hard to because you just got to go up that little hill by the, you know, by the Halloween section to go get yeah. it. But other than that, it's in a great – and they have they, – they sell Dole Whip like at Disney. They have everything. And just – I know this now has become somehow like a spinoff of the Holiday World podcast, <laughs> by the way, which is which is a great podcast if you like uh, theme parks, by the way. Um, but you should just say, even though I didn't go this year, you know, I, I can attest. I've been there two years straight before that. And I just tell you, the, the staff at Holiday World is – Really second to none. I mean, you hear about how Disney does this and Disney does that. Well, as far as I'm concerned, Holiday World, their their ownership and their, their, their uh, staff there outdoes Disney by far. Yeah. It, it, and I've been no to question. all the Disney parks. And, yeah, no. It's not – It's they are just the greatest group of people ever. Their sole purpose there is to make sure every guest has – the best time and it, and it doesn't stop from at till one in the morning literally the people will have the same amount of energy as they did at 9 a.m yeah you know, it's it's just incredible how they do it yeah it's insane but anyway go go to that event just just take my word for it all yeah. right so let's move <laughs> on brian you watched a sounds like a fascinating episode of the dead files i want to hear about yeah, so so that's this is one of uh, Julie's favorite shows that she loves to watch. Um, I don't know if if you guys aren't familiar with the Dead Files, it's um it's on the Travel Channel. It features um this uh, I guess a sensitive. Uh, her name is Amy Allen, and so you know she can talk to dead people. She can see dead people, and so the premise of the show is very unique compared to some of the other just random. I'm gonna go in with a bunch of ghost hunting crew. So what it is is. It's her and this old uh, New York detective named Steve, and they both go to the whatever uh, I guess location that there there is the focus of the episode. They go separately. They do not talk to each other until the end. So they are completely separate through the whole thing. She goes in with her husband who videotapes her, and you get to see her reactions to things. Most of the time, she's like, "Okay, I see a guy standing over there. He's very angry at me." Um. Just her, either she's the best actress in the world, or it, or like this. It's so one of the most believable out of these shows I've ever seen, and and like some of it's like chilling if you see the expressions on her face. Now, is this does this come on like any kind of streaming, or do you, or is this just on cable? Yeah, you can. Yeah, it's on it's on Travel Channel. You can get it on the Travel Channel app, but I think it's that's pretty much it. So you kind of need a. Uh, I think you pretty much need uh, either a sub- cable subscription or something, or. I, I as far as I know it's not on anything else. I think it's just on Travel Channel itself and the Travel Channel app. But um and so but some of the you know, her reactions are so genuine and creepy where she gets like physically ill sometimes because he's you know, they she has such a strong connection with this. And so where he goes and he studies the real behind the scenes, like if there's any criminal activity you know, she he he interviews the people there. That have you felt any? Uh, did you get any uh, paranormal activity? What what kind of stuff did you go through? So he goes through the real things and the interviews while she just goes around by herself with her husband, and just he videotapes her and she reacts. So there was only one episode ever where I think they met in the middle of the show. They they actually said it. They said this is the first time we're going to do this. We had to because I think it was something so severe that was going on that he found out that he was actually afraid for her um 
for whatever she was going to discover. So they actually broke the the mold of the show once to talk, as far as I know. I, I haven't seen every episode, but they made a big deal about this one. But anyway, so and what happens is then they meet at the end with the people in question. And he goes, so, you know, they ask her what she's seen. And she says, well, I see this and this. And it's almost always dead on to what he's discovered. So, I mean, could it be trickery if you want to go? But I, you know what? I get We get into this show a lot. It's really just so entertaining so i don't even like think about that so much i just i buy into it because it is really and she does these um well they'll do a police sketch usually and and she's like describes the exact like and the person will be like oh yeah that's so and so so it's just too it's either it's just trickery or it's it's too well done or whatever but i i kind of believe this one because this one is just seems so authentic have have you seen it tim at all no that's 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 why i was interested i'd like to go catch up on some back episodes yeah, I'll have to, I'll look around. I'll I'll search to see if I can find a thing. But if not, um, what I could probably do is like next I mean, whenever we come visit, I can download the app. And we can watch a couple episodes. But um, so anyway, so this episode we Julie really had watched one last night, and then the coming attraction to the next one, I saw it was like there was a there like, was a guy stood standing in front of this old like decayed Ferris wheel. I'm like, oh my god, the next one's at the theme park. I gotta watch this one. <laughs> so we we watched it, and it's. Based in on a, a an old abandoned amusement park uh, in West Virginia, and it's called Lake Shawnee Amusement Park. Um, it was closed down in 1966, but um, there was a big history towards this to this this land. And basically, the reason why they were called in the show was because, I and mean, apparently, I, I read too, this was featured on a bunch of Travel Channel shows. But um, the one um, the reason why they called them specifically is because the 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 uh, son. Um, was a worried that his worried that his mom is still living on this land and and because of the different activities they had, he uh, he was concerned so you know that that she was in danger, so but like I guess they go way through some of the history and apparently it was the site of a native a Native American burial ground at one point and this one of the this m- m- horrible massacre of the Clay family which was the original owners of the land. And they went into the story in the show, too. Um, basically, they had 14 children, um, but uh, one son and daughter were captured. They killed them and scalped them Ugh. on the land while, well, I guess, the parents were away. Yeah, it was pretty gory, they said. And then another son was captured, but it, but they kind of kept him. So the I guess the father came back, and the oldest sons went, and they, I guess, they tra- followed him all the way to Ohio. But it was too late by the time they got there. They had already killed the, the other son. Um but um, so I guess when she was or when she was going there, she said she sensed a lot of like uh, Native Americans that were angry, that didn't want people on their land, kind of thing. And and she was, you could tell she was like very uncomfortable, and she would just see blood on on different spots, and she, the way she was saying it, it was just really really chilling the way they said it. But um, so apparently then in the 1920s it was purchased and turned into an amusement park. Um, and there were several travel tragic accidents there that took place. I guess there were two drownings. Um, one woman that they interviewed, that the, the cop interviewed there, he said, uh, she was saying that she remembers going there as a kid and in the, the giant lake uh, pool area that they had, she was pulled under inexplicably and she, she couldn't figure out what, but she said she felt someone yank her down. I've got two theories on that. It was either okay. Jason or water zombies. Mm-hmm. I think you're right on both, but I think it's definitely one or the two for sure. But uh, yeah, and so supposedly she – I guess she said her – one of her relatives yanked her. I guess her uncle yanked her out by her hair, and she had known about the other two drownings there, I guess. And she was saying – she so she said all the years she was there, she always wondered. She goes, what pulled – was it the same thing that pulled these other two? Because the other two kids, I guess, that were found drowned were just found at the bottom of the pool. Like someone like kicked into them or something. And realized that there was someone drowned at the bottom. It was really like, you know, like they, no one saw it happen or anything. Yeah. They just found the dead body, drowned it. Yeah. So it was really creepy. And I guess they also have, uh, there was someone, a girl that died on the little swings ride. They had this really uh, rusty looking swing ride. Well, now it looks rusty. I'm sure it was okay back then at the time. But and apparently, like a truck backed out and killed her on the swings. Um, and they said basically, like they said, all the people that go to visit, they interviewed some other guests that had went there because I guess it was a they had ghost tours there they hosted, and I guess some people went when were there. They said they feel like they're constantly being followed. They have this this dread feeling of being watched everywhere they walk around the property. 
They said especially by the swings, especially by the lake, and which is now kind of almost dried up. It's but so a lot of people there, and she so when she went, uh, Amy Allen went around. She said she saw this tall robed person that was like she as she put it eight foot tall, but Ugh. she felt that he was more of a protector. That sounds scary. Well, like t- I don't like tall things. Exactly. That's why I said, like the Slender Man and all those things. That's just frightening people. So, she, but she said he wasn't frightening to her. He and she. She tells you. She goes like, yeah, like this person. Like she'll say, like this person does not want me there. Like she did. I think she went to Deadwood. It was the first episode we watched. It was a whole thing on Deadwood, which I know you would probably love. That oh yeah, episode. yeah. You know, I bet you could probably find if you looked on internet. Someone, someone's got to have the sites or something. But um, anyway, so. Then she said she saw the Native American spirits who were really, really angry. Oh, oh, and I almost forgot that I should preface this. So apparently this guy who owned the land, his her father died of a heart attack. His father died of a heart attack and his brother died of some kind of uh, – some other health issues. And I remember she had mentioned that um, – that the Native Americans were were kind of telling her that they were causing this because they didn't want this stuff on their land, and so she actually said she said she described someone and the uh, the mother and the the son that were there said no that he's like that's my brother, so he was there kind of watching out for people. So it's like the, he she was basically describing that there was this dual force. There was the Native Americans that were kind of like very um kind of angry. That anyone crossed the land, but the other, like the robed guy and the brother, were there to kind of protect the living. So it was like they said it was. A, she said it was, it was so unique because it was like they were protecting the living and protecting the dead at the same time. Yeah. So it was really kind of an interesting story. Um, so supposedly they, um, she basically, and at the end, usually she gives an advice. Like she goes, "Well, I think you need a cleansing. I think you need to do this." There's some where she says, "You need to get out. Don't even bother. Get out." But this guy refused to go to this land. He said he always wanted to to honor it because his father wanted to be on there. So um, so apparently you could still visit it, but they now require you to bring an offering to the Native American spirits there. So Julie already said that she'll she'll bring like a blanket so when so we can all go visit <laughs> okay, there cool. and she'll bring a blanket we can donate. I was Just make sure like, it doesn't have smallpox on it. I exactly yeah, right. Well, I was saying that like I, we could we well, like what kind of offering like a banana bread because Julie makes banana bread. But no, Julie's gonna say she said well, we're gonna she's gonna we'll donate a nice blanket. So, but so maybe we'll have to do that. That would maybe, be so I think fun. One time. We'll have to plan that. Yeah, because this place is cool. I mean, it's got two of our favorite things like the paranormal and the theme park element. Oh, it sounds. I cool. think it'll be cool. Yeah. But yeah, so this one, if you guys, anyone out there that has, uh, I guess. You know, Optimum or Fios, any cable system that has an on-demand, look this one up. It's the, um, I think it's from this season, and it's about the Lake Shawnee, and it's really interesting. You can find a lot of information on the interwebs on this one because it's, uh, you know, it's been on a bunch of travel channel shows, and a lot of people have written on it, a lot of people visit it to to get stories. So apparently, they said like people will, might camp out there or something. I think I read. So I don't know. I think that's a place that Tim and I need to visit. I do too. That sounds like a lot. I of think fun. we'll have to go there. Yes. So we do have some Friday the 13th, the game news. Yes. So double points this week, I guess, from the 4th, uh, which starts tonight, um, as we're recording through the 8th. Uh, so in those double points, as we mentioned many times, are great to really level up quickly. You can even – you can get them on the, the you know, the single-player mode when you play um, – you know, you play as Jason playing against the bots. Not the new single-player challenges, but the single-player mode. That's a good way to get some uh, points. And just, just just the double points in general, you can really level up. I'm finally almost up to the point I want where I can unlock the final Jason. But uh, And also there was a, um, a new pickaxe, pickaxe kill pack, basically using that little pickaxe that the Jason from Part 2 used in the game and that's for two ninety nine. I think there's three new kills. One of them I, I used already. It's pretty cool where he just kind of puts the axe in the ground and shoves the person's face <laughs> on it. That sounds cool. So, yeah, and by the way, you, Timmy, you got to start playing those single-player challenges. They're really fun. I know Cody said that she went through level two. She she got to roast Chad in the fire, and she was happy. Yeah, I may it. actually have to start that uh, tonight because yeah, I didn't fun. get a chance over the weekend because, you know, we were trying to – or last time we had double XP. I can't remember which weekend that was. I was just so busy, but I definitely want to try those out. And what's fun about it is it's, you know, it's one of those things where you can't get all the – you know the the goals in one round so you got to keep doing them because some are it's just it's just some of them you, there's no way to get all of them because so you have to do repeat things so it's like each level you get a lot of gameplay out of it you know unless you do it uh 
you know, unless you're like an expert person and can do it so easily, which I am not. So it, yeah, <laughs> it takes me it takes me uh, several, several tries. But it's great because it's really like a full on like you get a cinematic scene and some of them you have to like really figure out what you need to do. And there's always a hidden challenge on every board, too, which is like a basically you know, a hidden kill that if you watch long enough, you can kind of kind of figure out what they are but you got to really pay attention sometimes you literally have to watch through the whole scene and almost lose to make sure you gain everything that goes plays through and sometimes you have to let certain things happen sometimes you have to stop it before it happens to get all the goals so it's really cool Cool. and then lastly we have uh, an update on the sargod contest tell us about that brian so yeah, so uh, Sargod is having. Uh, there's a contest. It, it's got actually an official release. Um, so anyone that uh, was interested, based on my my glowing um, review on it, which it really was fantastic, um, it's going to be uh, available September 11th this year. So you can pre-order it. But they're giving away. Uh, it's word uh, Nordic Fantasy dot wordpress dot com, and I posted the link on our Facebook page. If you need to go look at it uh, to get the way to to actually uh, enter this contest. And basically all you got to do is put your name, email, and you have to answer the little trivia question they answer. Uh, they ask, I'm sorry, and the question is, who is the film's main special effects slash makeup artist? And if careful Civil War listeners, I had discussed this and mentioned and gave you a very big a clue to this answer, if not giving you the answer outright. I can't remember exactly how I said it. <laughs> But so you guys have an advantage there. But um, anyway, so it's um, there's a whole bunch of list. The the winners will uh, there's three winners they're picking. You'll receive one DVD each. The r- winners are actually picked at random, of course, from all the correct answers. So anyway, it's the version that I have. Uh, you can win. It's a uh, limited edition, first pressings, only 150 copies. And it's got a couple little bonus things. It's got signed. It's got um, it's got some short films. Uh, Sarah's uh, Gierski's other short films on there that I had mentioned. So it's a really great disc. It's great to win it. I mean, still, I su- highly suggest people purchase it for those um, who really love good indie horror films because it's fantastic. But um, hey, you know what? If you want to try and win it ahead of time, just there you go. So just look at our Facebook page. I did send a link. Um, on how to, to go to this contest. Links it right to it, and you can fill it out, answer the trivia question, and good luck. Cool. All right, well, let's get right into our disc memberment. Wait, no, please, God. No, no, come on, All right, these are the Blu-ray releases for June 12th, 2018, and I think we have a couple of good titles in here. Uh, the first one up is actually Brian's Pick of the Week. This is the newest Entry in the Strangers franchise. I guess you can call it a franchise. There's two movies now. (laughs) It may become a franchise. Two two chais. (laughs) Uh, The Strangers Pray at Night. This was, of course, from 2018. This one is a Universal Studios release. And it was directed by Johannes Roberts, starring Bailey Madison, Christina Hendricks, and Martin Henderson. A family of four staying at a secluded mobile home park for the night are stalked and then hunted by three masked psychopaths. So um, I I really want to see this one. Yeah, I picked I put his pick of my week because I wanted to have something different from you. You know, we like to give um, two separate pick of the weeks if possible. And I know I love the first one. So I'm actually really uh, this is one that I would probably purchase. So that's why I'm making it the pick of the week because I will not suggest something that I wouldn't purchase myself. Right. That's a that's a goes for both of us, I think. Yeah. Um, but this one, for a universal title, it does have a couple of cool features. It has an alternate ending. It has a music video. I think it's a director's cut mm. music video of one of the songs in the film and uh, a couple of featurettes. So n- not a bare oh, bones disc by any means. That's cool. No, and I think the original disc had uh, some alternate ending too. So that must be a common thread for this film. I mean, maybe they do it intentionally to just because they're not sure how they want to. If they want to surprise someone, maybe they do it intentionally, but you never know. Yeah. The next one up is my pick of the week. This is 2006, 2006's, yeah, 2006's. <laughs> 2006's Abominable, of course. It's a, Where it's was a this a couple of weeks ago, for God's sake, when we needed it? Yeah, it's a, so this is a, a Bigfoot film, of course, and this one's being released by MVD Visual, who we've seen pop up a couple times here and there. Yeah. And this one was directed by Ryan... Schifrin, Schifrin, I'm sorry, Ryan Schifrin, and it stars Matt McCoy, Haley Joel, and Christian Tinsley. And this one I had seen mentioned on a lot of the best Bigfoot horror movie lists, 
uh, near the top, if not the top. So I really, really want to check this one out. The uh, yeah. This is a absolutely packed, packed disc, which is another reason I want to get This is a true collector's edition. It has a 2K remaster, a new introduction to the film, uh, a, an additional short film, an audio commentary with writer-director Ryan Schifrin and actors Matt McCoy and Jeffrey Combs, a featurette, deleted scenes, outtakes and bloopers, the director's student film, uh, the original 2005 cut of the movie, which is apparently oh, wow. a little different, a trailer, uh, still galleries, and a collectible poster. So, Do they have a piece of hair <laughs> in there? from the uh... An actual Sasquatch hair, no. But, I nice, mean, they, they, nice. everything but the kitchen sink in this one. So that's, that's a really great disc. I may pick this one up blind. I have not seen the movie, but I've heard such good things that I may just have to get this one. Yeah, I may do that, that as well. You know what we need? We really need, though, them to come out with Sasquatch, The Legend of Bigfoot Special Edition. Oh, my God. Now. I would buy that in a heartbeat. Oh, my God. Me, too. <laughs> that wouldn't even be a, a, a – it would be such a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next one up is not really – I'm not going to go through the, the each title because they're just re-releasing all the yeah. Purge films in 4K editions. So you'll get The Purge, The Purge Election Year, and The Purge Anarchy are all being reissued as 4K releases, I guess, because of the new movie coming out, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The next one up is The Mimic from 2017. The Mimic. Yeah, not, not, from 2017. Not, not to be confused with Mimic. <laughs> not to be confused with Mimic. Yeah. You see what I'm doing yeah. there? Oh, God. I'm yeah. mimicking you. I was wondering what you were doing. Terrible. Oh god. Well, I haven't been fired. Well, you, in a while, you don't so have the southern accent that was, that down was your yet, chance. Brian. Sorry. I yeah. don't. No, I don't. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't. I, have but it. see this movie, I was like, is that Mimic from like the nineties or eighties? What was Mimic? Remember that one? Yeah, yeah. With uh, what's her face in it? Um, the girl uh, that was in that thing. Yeah. No. Um. Oh no. my god. Romy Michelle. What's her name? Mira right? Sorvino. Was in it? Yes. Right. That was her. Yeah. Mira Sorvino. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah i used to love mimic that was from 1997 yeah why that's and that's so this is not this is it. not that okay. this is a the mimic and this one's oh, from okay. 2017 it's being released by well go usa so this one is actually a korean horror film and uh the i'm not even going to try to pronounce the original title <laughs> there is an aka but i'm not going to try to pronounce it uh, but the direct is directed by uh, Jung Ha, who, Jung Hu, who's yeah. on first? I don't know. Yeah, H U H. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce that. I guess who? Yeah, I, I would say that is who. I guess. Um, right? Starring Jin Hao, Jun Hyuk Lee, and Hyuk Kwan Park. So sorry, I butchered mm. those names, but I just don't know how to pronounce those. But uh, yeah, the the Jeng San Tiger who mimics human voices to lure them close, encounters a family affected by the creature. Hmm. Okay. Like, so he encounters a family affected by himself? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I'm not... I'm, I'm trying to... Yeah, I'm trying to wrap my head around that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's mimicking him, so maybe that's it. I know. That'd be like... Um, <laughs> that'd be like Bigfoot encountering a family... Who encountered Bigfoot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but anyway. So that sounds interesting. I, lo I love Korean horror movies, so that, that sounds like it'd be kind of creepy. Wasn't that, they, was it, was Trained from Busan Korean? Yes. I can't yes, remember. it was. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's the one I infamously got completely wrong. Oh, that's right. And Ken corrected yeah. us, right? Yeah. Um, so. Well, just for that, Ken, now that's why we're going over an hour because of, uh, yeah. no, actually it might not be. We, we had a lot of breaks that you guys won't <laughs> yeah. hear about because because of uh <laughs> julie crumpling the paper tim <laughs> the cat scratch yeah we had a, the cat scratch the cat scratch yeah we had a lot of stuff going all right on. uh the next one up is the devil's carnival from 2012 this one actually got pretty darn good reviews on imdb 6.5 is pretty respectable for a horror movie on imdb um this one is a horror musical it's only 56 minutes and uh it's directed by darren lynn balsman or boozman does that even count as a feature, though? 56 minutes? That's too short. That doesn't even... I don't know. It looks interesting. Yeah. Uh, stars Sean Patrick Flannery, Brianna Evigan, and Jessica Lowndes. Lowndes? Oh, yeah. She's been in a lot of stuff. She was in that movie Altitude uh, with the plane that where, we, where the plane keeps rising. Oh, yeah, 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 that? yeah. That's yeah. really good, that one. Um, this one's an interesting a new, new company, Cleopatra. 
don't know if that's like a just an indie hmm. release. I don't know what that is, but Cleopatra. And I didn't see any. Now I want to eat grapes. Yeah. I don't know. I why. didn't see any special <laughs> features on this one, so um, that that seems like a bit of a novelty there, like a little hour long horror musical. Yeah. I like musicals. I like horror. So. Was it a TV show, maybe? Like a special I TV don't know. special, possibly? I don't know. I don't know I don't anything know. about it. If you guys know anything about this one, let us know. Yeah, send us send us a note. <laughs> and uh, the last one on our list is Curse of the Puppet Master from 1998. I want to say this is the sixth film. Oh, God knows anymore. Where is it? I, there's so many of these. And the, the worst thing is I read it as Curse of the Pink Panther. I looked down. I don't know yeah. why. <laughs> no. Why I thought that would be on our rundown, I have no idea. <laughs> But uh, I don't know why this one is being released, like, singly like this. Yeah, like, what did this one know. do that gets gets its special treatment? I don't know. So this was... The randomly middle, like, movie. I love this. Of, this, of uh, this director, David DeCotou, De directed this as Victoria Sloan. It's interesting that a director changed genders in, in his... Uh, yeah, his what's that like that other guy who always like changes his name, but you yeah you always like always out of his yeah, real name. What it was? One. I can't remember the guy's yeah, name, but yeah, um, that's interesting. And then he goes by like a different. Even director. the writer would not put his own name to that. It was written by Neil Marshall Stevens. I know where you are, Neil Marshall Stevens. You're not Benjamin yeah. Carr. Yeah. So, uh, stars George Peck, Emily Harrison, and Josh Green. It'd hmm. be cool if it starred Gregory Peck. Yeah, I know that would that would have been a good drag. That maybe that would have been a good grab because that would have been a, a worthy of a, its own release in the middle of eighteen other. Films that would have been like a 1958's <laughs> Curse of the Puppet Master. Yeah, I want. To, yeah, I still. I think we need to. Here's another research thing for you guys. Find out why this one got released separately from all the others that are countless editions of the Puppet Master series. Yeah, you know? one of these days, but they need to get their act together. One of these days, I want every Puppet Master film on Blu-ray. Tell, you guys tell me the best way to do that. Tell, tell yeah. tweet me or Facebook. Tell me how do I get the or do I have to wait until they just release something like some giant box? Set? How many are there? Do we even know? Because isn't there like like Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys? Which series is that in? Like, is that in its own series well, or is that? I'll like tell a you. I've thing? got the the DVD box set I have, which had all of them at the time, has seven. But there's so many more now, right? Yeah, but that was that's been ages ago that I had that box set. So I don't know how many they released after that. They probably doubled by this point. I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't do my research to find out how many Puppet Master movies, and I claim to be a fan, and I don't even keep up with them. But well, now now we've given people three topics yeah. I think to look up. <laughs> um, how does Tim get his box yeah, set? Yeah, to figure it out. That's uh, yeah. do my dirty work for me. So lastly, we have a hugely oh, high yeah. theatrical release for this week. I'm not going to go into the summary because we've talked about it already. But that, but it's the scariest film ever made. Yes, you will literally have a Tim. heart attack. People are walking out. They're so terrified They're of it. They're fainting <laughs> in the aisles. Yeah. Um, There's a nurse outside waiting. <laughs> you have to sign a waiver before you even go into the theater. Yes. Um, People are vomiting in their seats. No. Okay. So this one is hereditary. Yes. All kidding aside, I, this is one I've been looking forward to a lot. Yeah, I don't care if it if it doesn't scare me in the slightest, as long as it's good, I'm I'm in. Because and it and Tony Collette, who's becoming getting her horror cred really up there, she I'll watch anything that uh, she's in anyway because she's so good. I mean, she was great in Krampus. She was great in Sixth Sense. Yeah. So I mean, what what you know you you know you're getting a quality person that's going to be all in in this thing, regardless of. It's the scariest film you ever saw. Or you're gonna vomit on the way out. Whatever, you know. <laughs> I'm still looking forward to this. Seeing, I'll it. go ahead and read the summary. When the matriarch of the Graham family passes away, her daughter's family begins to unravel cryptic and increasingly terrifying secrets about their ancestry. So I don't, hmm. I don't know what to expect. I mean, it's got a great, great sounding plot right yeah. there. I mean, it, 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 it definitely pulls you in. I mean, that's an interesting story. I'm gonna find a way to see this this weekend somehow, some way. Yeah, I'm going to be in California, but I was talking to Paul because hopefully Paul and I will be able to uh, to meet up again um, uh, throughout our, our both of our crazy schedules. But I definitely want to meet up, and we were talking about maybe possibly going to see that. Like last time we got to see Hatchet, uh, you know, Victor Crowley together. So hopefully we'll get to see this because Paul and I used to have a long history of going to see many, many a horror film. So that would be great to if I could go out and see that because I definitely want to uh, – 
you know, he's definitely one of my big horror influences there. So it would be fun to see it. And that's a movie you kind of want to see in the theater, I think, as soon as you can. Because I could see that being one where people are like, it wasn't scary because of blah, 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 blah. And tells the whole thing. And, you know, I'm like, oh. So, you know, I kind of want to see, uh, try and see that definitely this week. And plus, you know, I'll you know, be out there with, uh, you know, some nights. We'll probably have some. You know, even if we see like a 10 o'clock show, you know, God knows what time zone will be on. <laughs> we're getting such a wacky time zone because, you know, we're definitely three hours, uh, uh, you know, ahead of everyone at that point. But I seem to get like this weird zone where I'm in kind of in the middle when I, as soon as I get out there, it's very odd. Yeah. But yeah, so maybe we'll get this. That's see when that. you definitely want to avoid spoilers. Yeah, yeah. And another thing I was going to mention is because Julie is actually not too far from the actual original Win- Winchester Mystery House. I'm going to try, even though I've gone done the. Yeah, okay, I can speak. Um, I've done the tour several times. I still may uh, possibly do it again just for the podcast and go through it again, get it fresh into my head. And actually, it was funny because in the Winchester DVD, there was actually a coupon to get me $5 off the mansion tour. So oh, There you go. Take a lot of <laughs> so pictures. So now it's even more yeah. worth it. Yeah, worst comes to worst, I will at least drive by there and take some pictures of the mansion outside and in front of worst case scenario. Even if we don't have time for the full tour, I will definitely – Go by and get some pictures for everybody. That would be cool. All right. Yep. So next up, we have our beer pairing. We did do a beer pairing this week just because we're beer guys, so we got to have a beer pairing. So tell us about that. One of the rare times I'm actually drinking the beer I paired with, and this is um, Never Tell Me the Odds by Duclaw Brewing. And the reason I picked it is because I am tired of all the solo hate out there. <laughs> frankly, for this film, and they're pissed, oh, it's going to be the only Star Wars film to ever lose money, and people are boycotting it for stupid reasons, because they didn't like The Last Jedi, and Kathleen Kennedy, and Disney, and Ryan Johnson, they're all blaming it, so so this film, which is actually, everyone I've talked to loved it, so, but there's some people who are not going to see that are just basically hurting themselves in all honesty because it was a really really fun star wars movie i loved it even if it wasn't star wars i probably would have enjoyed it just as much it was really good but anyway so i felt i'd honor it at least i do my part to help promote it and this is a great uh i think i sent a picture of it once already on the uh on our instagram but it's a it's never tell me uh, me odds but yeah never tell me the odds by uh do claw as i said and i'll read to you the description that they gave it's the odds of successfully navigating the galaxy of juicy double IPAs approximately is 3,720 to 1. Luckily, this one made it by the right band of rebellious heroes who can deliver the delicious blend of tropical and citrus hop flavors. You've been searching, oh, sorry, uh, the citrus hop flavors you've been searching the universe for. The 16 ounce can will make a refreshing run on your taste buds in less than 12 parsecs. So, yeah, obviously. It's Star Wars themed, and they did it with the can too. It's a black star field on the can with a Star Wars yellow lettering. It's um, and it even says "craft beers, craft be cherished, rules be damned" at the bottom of it, which is kind of funny. But uh, but yeah, it's a really really good Citra Mosaic Double IPA. Um, it it's um, it's eight percent, but it is delicious. Tim, I wish this goes by. I wish somehow I don't know how Declaw. Um, they're in Baltimore, Maryland, so you may get it distributed near you. I would definitely keep my eye out for it because it is fantastic. I've never seen them around here, but I haven't been specifically looking either, so I have to just kind of keep an eye out. Yeah, I mean, it's like it is one of my out of the last years, one of my favorite IPAs I've had. Wow. Actually, it's delicious. That's great. Duclaw always does a good job, but this one is really good, and two, it's two of my favorite hops in there: Citra Mosaic. So I was already going to be in. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so this one is really, really good. So yeah, it's, so it's uh, Duclaw Brewing, uh, Never Tell Me the Odds, a famous Han Solo line, obviously. Um, yeah, so look for it. Um, I guess, oh, you know what's funny? It, literally, that the whole thing I read to you is actually on the can itself. Oh, cool. <laughs> I read it from the oh. website, but it's actually on the can, that whole that whole little speech. Nice. But yeah. They should have done it in like a crawl, like the Star Wars crawl. Yeah, I know. That would have been nice. They definitely did, though, if you look. Um, I'll double-check, make sure I posted it on. If not, I'll post the can on um, our Instagram page. But it's definitely it's using that Star Wars yellow lettering yeah. like the Krull has yeah. as, a, as a thing. So it's really good. Good job, Duclaw. So in our six degrees of decapitation, we're going to just let you stew on the one from last week because it was a bit, a bit longer. So just to refresh your memory, we'll give you the answer next week. 
We asked you to connect Brad Dourif of Child's Play fame to Doug Bradley of Hellraiser fame to Anthony Perkins of Psycho fame to <laughs> Tobin Bell of Saw fame. So if you can... Which did you see? There was a tease of a possibly another There was, yeah. Saw we didn't mention that. but With the return of Jigsaw. But I'll yeah. tell you what, if it's not any better than the last one, I really don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. All I know is, is like, maybe we should. Uh, I'm glad we're not. I don't think we're. Uh, I'm wondering if we should like now push that back to another year for uh, the following year after this next one comes out because I definitely want to. I like to. We'd like to try and do our uh, summer slaycations in in their entirety, and that would kind of stink that that one comes out right after. But oh well. Yeah. Well, it's going to be tough um, going through the entire Hellraiser series and Saul because there's some bad entries. But like, yeah, uh, Ken was laughing at our last episode when we announced Hellraiser, and he just sent me a text that said, "Your suffering will be legendary even in hell," because <laughs> he's seen oh, some awesome. of the later movies are really bad. But yeah. we're, we're... well, I plan to watch the first two on my trip because I downloaded them to. Um, I think they were on uh, Netflix. So I did the first two. You know how you can download uh, yeah. movies on Netflix for a limited well, time? So I downloaded the first two to watch on my trip. Hopefully I'll probably watch one on the plane tomorrow. and then. Uh, well, I, I do have bad one, news. Uh, They're not available anywhere Uh-oh. for free for streaming. The rest of them. No, on, Net- on Netflix No, the they are. one, two, and three are available, but you can't oh. get any of the rest of the franchise anywhere without renting it. At one point it was, though. I think it's on one of the cable streams. Like I think stars or, uh, or HBO, one of those. Okay, maybe that's it. I gotta look. I gotta double check. I do have that. HBO, and I could grab stars. So yeah, okay, maybe maybe I'll do that. So we'll wrap it up there, guys. Uh, we'll be back next week, of course, with Evil Speak. And if you would be so gracious, leave us a nice iTunes review, like our good friend David Terry did. They sent us a, a really fantastic review. We really appreciate that. And if you want to send us a review, we'll, yes, thank you we'll so give much. you a shout out too. <laughs> that was great. Uh, yes, yeah, see? You can also get in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, we're at civilgorepodcast at gmail.com if you want to drop us an email. If you want to suggest a film for us to do, we're always looking for suggestions. We always like hearing from you guys. And we have a lot of fun doing this podcast. And the more you guys interact, the more fun we have and the more great content we can put out for you. So we'll yes. see you back here next week. Yes. Enjoy every everybody. And we will come back next week with evil speak. It will be good. So be so. And actually, you know what I got to say? This is a cool thing because now it, it's available on prime. So you guys can all watch it actually this week too. You'll have ahead of time. So you can actually, you know, a lot of times we don't announce the movies so much ahead of time that you can watch it with us, but now you can actually watch it with yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. To some level, so that'll be good. And Tim, you have, real quick, have you seen that? I have not seen it. Have you seen Evil Speaker? Oh, okay. I'm really good. excited. I'm, yeah. I'm actually interested to hear your thing. Yeah, because I think you'll really like this one. It's another one of those 80s uh, horror fun classics, cool. I think, that you'll Looking like. Looking forward to it. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. See you later. Thank you.